Hello, welcome back to Quaron TV. This is episode two of Experimental Kitchen, and today we will be learning how to cook chilaquiles. So we are a um, couple weeks into this wonderful social experiment, uh, including social distancing. I hope everybody's doing okay. And I want to say thank you so much for tuning into episode one where we learned how to cook a black chicken. There was way more viewers than I ever anticipated. I'm very grateful for your support. And really, this is just about having fun, um, occupying some time while we're all at home and uh, wondering what we should do. So um, in that viewership, I was very blessed. Um, one of my very favorite people in the whole wide world had to place a re special request for a recipe. And that's my mother. So this episode is um, dedicated to my mother and we'll be learning how to make chilaquiles. So chilaquiles is a Mexican recipe, it's a Mexican dish that's based on shredded corn tortillas that have been fried and then cooked almost like a lasagna. And you can put a variety of different things on the top. Today we'll be working with chicken, so we're going to make some chicken to put on top of the tortillas. But you can get experimental and do other things like um, if it's a breakfast, you can put scrambled eggs on top of the tortillas, or if you want to add some vegetables, you can put cooked vegetables, baked vegetables on top, including nopales, which is a cactus leaf that has been cooked and cut into strips as well. So depending on your flavor and how you like to um, uh, enjoy your cuisine, you can um, shake it up a little bit. So today we're just gonna make a traditional chicken chilaquiles. So, First step is we're going to take these tortillas um, and they come in a package round. Um, I work with, um, I like La Banderita, that's my favorite brand. I just like the way their tortillas taste. Some tortillas have a bit of an acid taste to them or they taste a bit funky, these don't. Um, so I, I use this one. So you're gonna, uh, this is a package of 30 and it's a lot of tortilla strips that we're gonna make but um, I think we're gonna use them all. So when you open the package, you'll see that little pieces are gonna fall off on the top. So I throw that one away and on the bottom. So I throw that one away, those tortillas get very dry. So we can just discard those because they will just fall apart if we try to cook with them. The rest of them should be okay. And so we're just gonna set these aside and focus on the other ones that are, have a little more moisture content in them and are easier to prepare. So you might recognize this bowl from, or this pot from last week. This is where our black chicken was cooked in. And so today we're gonna use it a little bit differently. I'm gonna actually fry in it. So I know a lot of people use a frying pan to fry. Um, I like using a deeper pan or pot because it allows to keep the little droplets of the oil as they crackle and pop and so on from getting all over my stove. And as you can see, the type of stove that I have, it gets messy pretty quickly. So. I use a, a higher edge to contain the heat and the pops of grease as they work. So what I have here is a jar of previously used oil that has been filtered. Oh, I can't get it open, hold on. And I filter the oil and reuse it so that it's um, not just a single use. And I'll show you at the end of this episode how to do that because I will recycle this oil one more time after we use it. As you can see, it's really clear, so it's only been used once and uh, not for anything um, very uh, fragrant or that releases any fats or anything so it can be used again. So I'm going to put actually the entire container of oil in here. We won't use all of it, but it's going to give me enough depth to cover the tortilla strips while they're cooking in here. And so I'll um, show you what that looks like. That's a lot of oil in there. It's probably about half an inch thick, about that, that deep. And um, mentioned in my previous episode that um, because this is a glass stove uh, cooktop, um, I'm a little, it's a little bit funky to work with, so you'll see me fiddling with the temperature. If I turn it on lower than five, only one of the heating elements comes on. As soon as I cross that five threshold, the two elements come on, and so it usually burns my food. It's much more difficult to control than if I was working with gas, for example, which is my favorite. <laughs> so um, what we're going to do is start to cook the tortillas. This is gonna take some time, so you need to have a little bit of patience. And 
I use tongs to turn the tortillas and pull them out of the pot as they cook. It's just easier that way. And we're gonna set this over to the side until we're ready for it, which might be in a while. So I guess you can take about, I usually do it by feel, that's about five tortillas. We're gonna do six. And you're gonna get your nice knife and just begin to cut these in strips, very easy. That's it, nothing to it. Just push down on the knife and so you have some strips in here. And you can go ahead and cut them all at once or cut them in steps. And you'll see my process how I do this. The water, I'm saying the oil is almost hot enough. Again, I've got it just over that five mark so it heats a little bit faster and then I'll turn it down. So in the meantime, while we wait for that to heat, um, we could either, uh, mine's heating pretty quickly so we won't have much time to chat, but you could either cut up the chicken in pieces and then cover it with adobo, which I'll show you how to do in a second. First, we're just gonna focus on the tortillas for now because they will cook relatively quickly. So we just take these and put them in the oil and I'll show you what that looks like. I don't know if you can see that. And just like you're frying anything else, you're just going to move them around. Make sure they don't stick to the bottom. And let them do their thing. So if you want to feel industrious in the meantime, you can go ahead and grab another stack and cut. And it doesn't have to be perfect. You can make them very thin or make them very thick. Maybe I'll just go ahead and recover some time by doing that now. Oops, I cut into the other one. See, that's why I kind of do it in stages. That way I don't have all these mistakes that happen. So I'm just going to leave that for a minute and focus over here. And I'm going to cook these tortillas. The first batch takes longer because the oil is not quite hot enough yet. But as the temperature stabilizes, they start to cook quicker. So you're just gonna cook them until they're golden brown. And um, I guess we can talk about some of the ingredients while we're waiting. So I haven't, I didn't have regular like yellow onions to cook with. So I went out to my garden and pulled out one of these spring onions, which I'm going to chop. And we're gonna saute that with the chicken. And we'll do that in a separate step. Once we cut the chicken up, we'll put this adobo, which is a flavoring. It's a mix of salt, garlic, and oregano, black pepper, and turmeric. And this is a standby in all Latin kitchens. You've probably been encountered that before. And I keep that in my spice rack always. Everything has adobo on it. So the, you can see the heat is picking up here a little bit and the tortillas are moving from floppy and soft into a little more crispy. And I'll tell you a little bit more about the, the dish. So there's a, a pan over there, a long, a long pan like you would use for lasagna. And so we're going to take the tortillas from here, put them in this bowl that's lined with paper towel to absorb the excess oil and sprinkle salt on them. And then once they're finished, we'll put them in the deep pan, the long one, like a lasagna pan, so that um, the tortillas are all spread out. Once we cook the chicken, we'll put the chicken on top of the tortillas and we'll mix it in with all the other ingredients um, when we get to that step. So hopefully you're having fun. And um, if you do try this at home, just make sure that you um, keep your eyes on the oil because tortilla strips can look really white one second and then you'll turn around and go do something else and then you'll come back and they're like black. <laughs> That's happened to me numerous times, especially when you get towards the end and the oil starts to get less and the temperature gets a little bit more hot. But, um, chilaquiles is such a good dish. I love it. It's so, it's comforting. It uh, makes me very happy. It's not necessarily a hugely nutritious dish like we did with the black chicken where it's like a jing replenisher. 
but something about soul replenishing works just as well, don't you think? As you can see, the tortillas are getting a little bit crispy. So just a few more seconds and they'll be done. I'll start to pull them out. In the meantime, let me go get the salt, which I did not pull out. And this is just Himalayan pink salt, kind of finely ground. I keep this jar always full with a little serving spoon so we don't have to reach in with fingers. And there you go. We've already got, I turned around just to get the tortilla, I'm sorry, the salt, and here the tortillas are already turning brown. It doesn't take long. Once they decide to cook, that's it. They're going to start cooking real quick. So what we're going to do is actually we're going to leave these a little bit lighter than the rest and go ahead and start pulling them out. Because Believe me, they will start to cook real fast. And you'll be rushing to pull these out before they get burned. Okay, so just two more pieces. So as I'm pulling pieces out, I'm usually reaching over for the next batch and bringing these in. There's only one more piece in here. Done. So you see they went from white to golden brown really quick. I'm just going to go ahead and put two batches in there and then quickly take a little bit of salt and salt the strips so that they have some flavor to them. I'm going to turn this down so I turn off that extra heating element and bring it down into a manageable temperature so I don't have a bunch of burned tortilla strips. So now we're going to actually get close to starting the production line. This pan is where we're going to eventually put into the oven to, to cook the chilaquiles in their final state. And I'm just making sure that they're not stuck together in the pot. Once these have cooled off, because those are coming along very quickly, or drained, you can go ahead and put them in the larger pan and make space for the new ones. So here's a close-up where you can see what they look like. It's just like tortilla strips or um, chips that you would get at a Mexican restaurant. I've already got some brown coming on these. I put two batches in, so it's going to take a moment to get to the crispy part, but they will come. And if they break apart or they stick together, it's not a big issue um, because we're going to mix and stir this all up in a little bit. And so you'll have some flexibility with that. In the meantime, I'm going to go ahead and cut the next stack. And have them ready. That's what I meant, like you'll start with a little production line because once you start pulling these out and putting them in here, and then those come in here, and then those go over there, and you do the next one. So I, I guess for personal taste, you could use um, the yellow corn tortillas. It doesn't matter. Um, I don't use flour just because of the gluten. I prefer the corn, so it's... Um, it's up to you really what you prefer. If you prefer the flour tortillas, I've never really fried them, but I'm sure that they'll fry just about the same. And I know for a fact that the yellow versus the white are going to cook the same anyway, so it's, it's personal preference as you wish. I just like the white ones. Now, if somebody were to make blue corn tortillas like this, oh, that would be fun because I like blue corn. That's, that's good. Plus, it'll probably have extra proteins and nutrients in it. But, you know, I don't know. I've never seen them in the grocery store, and I'm all about convenience as well. So, I mean, I like exotic recipes. I used to do a lot of cooking um, before I got involved too much in, you know, raising kids and stuff like that. And so, um, you know, it's got to be convenient as well. As much as I appreciate a complicated meal and a gourmet dish, if it's going to take me an hour and a half to cook it, I probably won't make it at home instead reserve that for our Friday night eat out and um, go have somebody else prepare it. So one of our traditions at home is we eat home cooked meals Monday through through Thursday. 
Saturdays and Sundays. And then Friday, um, if we can, if time permits and the budget permits, then we treat ourselves to eating out. And so usually the family will pick what they want to have. And I just say, you know, pick something that I don't make at home because that way you have an extra treat and you treat yourself with. So this has gotten too cool. So I have to raise the temperature one more time because my tortillas have stopped cooking. And so that is one of the caveats of cooking on a glass top stove. So what will probably happen next is that they'll actually get burned. Oh, there's my helper. <laughs> Oh, so I was telling you, so Friday night adventure. So Friday night we go out to a place like something that I wouldn't make at home. So that way, you know, we have a way to treat ourselves and do something interesting and different. So the family likes sushi. I mean, as I've seen a couple of videos on how to make sushi and I tried it a couple of times. I just decided the Japanese do it way better than I do. So we go out and have sushi sometimes. Um, there are a lot of things that we enjoy. But chidakina is again, you know, home food, comfort food, stews and one pot meals. Those are things that I really like because they're convenient. And um, it's not a huge uh, time constraint or burden to, to make those meals. All right, so here we go. They're already starting to get golden. Like I said, they'll probably burn just because I turned the temperature up. So, um, let me pull out the darker ones because they're already getting too, too cooked. By the time these come out, the ones that remain inside the pot are already getting very cooked. What else? You could use one of those um, nifty little strainer, like big round things. It's got like wires in the center, I don't know what you call it, but people use it to pick up fried foods. You could use one of those. I just use these as what I have at home. Okay, all the little pieces have to come out. So I'm gonna go ahead and put in the bigger pieces. And just pull out the last remaining. And this is why you're going to go ahead and actually strain the oil at the end because you have little pieces of tortilla left over. So just a little bit of salt, not a lot. <laughs> Excuse me. Yes. This camera died. Oh, okay, so we're looking over here now, hi. And the oil is picking up that temperature really quick, so let me go ahead and cut the last stack. Because we're gonna move through this last bit pretty quickly. This should be cool enough to come over here. Yep. And so, once again, you can see, nice big pan full of tortilla chips. So remember, we did a package of 30. And there's three people in this household, so um, that will be enough for us. Usually at the end of the, of the meal, we might have like one serving left over, but we can eat through that pretty quickly. Um, so if they get stuck together like this, this piece here, you can use, since I'm done with that, I can go ahead and separate it. And sometimes I leave it in there for fun, just because it's like a, a prize. It's like, oh, I got the one that had the tortillas all stuck together. And so sometimes that can be fun. Yep, so as predicted, these are cooking down pretty quickly. They're getting nice and golden. And in a few seconds, we'll be done. So if you're at home, you could go ahead and start cutting the onion or get the chicken prepped. I'm going to focus over here because I know it just takes a second for me to be distracted. And these tortillas will be burned. You got to keep your eyes on these. Yep, and there they go, already cooked and golden. So pull out the darker ones, just like that. Okay. 
let them drain the excess oil and go ahead and grab the last batch. And there you go. That's it, we'll just leave that aside. All right, we'll be back in a minute. Awesome, so now we're done with all of the tortilla strips. You can see them over here. And some of the last ones came out pretty dark. And that's okay because we're going to cover them with some um, salsa verde in a little bit. And so extra crispy is not a problem. Right now what I have is um, the oil is sitting over here cooling down and I have my skillet ready to cook the chicken. First part of the chicken is to cut the onion because I'm going to use that for sauteing. So I'm going to have a nice good flavor for it. I've got a runaway onion down there. So I'm going to use, just put this in here. And there's enough, um, that's not true. There's enough here in this onion to give me the flavor I'm looking for. If it were a yellow onion, like I mentioned before that I would use, then um, I would use the whole onion. I'm pretty abundant with it. So let me capture that escaped onion. Rinse it off. We'll put it to the side just in case we need it. But for now, let's go ahead and take the chicken and start cutting this. So for cutting, um, slicing and cutting meats like this, you want to use a bigger knife. Oh, I forgot to put the other one on it. So again, this is the, the uh, seasoning mixture, which I'll just go ahead and dump in here like that. And then just put that over the chicken. So you use a bigger knife, like this, to cut chicken or meats and slices. Then the knife, for example, that I used last week, which is made, made for deboning. So there's enough moisture on this chicken right now that I don't have to put any oil into the pan, but I'll monitor it if I feel like it's um, getting stuck too much. Then I'll put some oil in the pan. But for now, it looks like they're doing okay. This pan, um, my iron skillets always have a coating of um, fat on them to keep them from oxidizing. And I guess we can do a small follow-up video which shows you how I do that. In case you're wondering. So of course if you don't do it as quickly as I do with a knife, I know some people don't then you can just cut your chicken up separately beforehand and then just put it in the pan. So as you can see, I'm just putting it into either strips and then maybe turning it once so that it goes into right candles. I'm gonna take that little piece of onion and put it in there, it'll be fine. I'm getting some stick in here, so let me take a little bit of olive oil. Um, yeah, just like that. Now here's the trick. I know it's noisy right now, we don't have the best audio, so I appreciate your patience. Um, it's gonna be noisy while we stir fry this. But I do want it at a high heat so that I can get the browning on the chicken, which you can see like right here. It's starting to brown. And I need that to happen because I want that browning to bring out the flavor in the chicken. So I love my iron skillet because 
it's um, it's a non-stick surface. And it takes heat very well. My mom loves her, her iron skillets as well. And I live in Georgia, so maybe that's what has something to do with it. And since this episode is for my mother, I guess I would call it the tea. In homage to my mother, here is the iron skillet, and I'm cooking with it. <laughs> Um, in my family, um, we use iron skillets as well to make, um, we call that cornbread. That's a recipe my grandmother has passed down for a while. Of course, if you live in the South, you know that everybody loves their cornbread. So here's another trick. This is a trick to get your chicken to cook a little bit faster. If you put a lid on it, it'll trap that heat and all of that steam instead of having it go out into the environment and uh, keep it from drying out and get it to cook a little bit faster. Looking good. Just like with the tortillas though, you gotta keep your eyes on it because they will burn. This, this stove top definitely uh, likes to keep me on my toes. No time to waste. So I know it still looks close to because I'm getting that browning on the bottom. <clears throat> and I want that chicken to get a little bit burned um, from the bottom. I really actually want that to happen. It gives, again, it gives a good flavor. And when we're done cooking the chicken, we're actually going to um, let it cool down a little bit and then I'm gonna pull it apart into pieces and put it on top of the tortilla strips. So I want every piece of the chicken to have a really good flavor in it. Let me get my oven, my oven mitt so I don't burn my fingers pulling this lid off because it's going to get hot. <clears throat> so I can tell you the story about where this oven mitt came from. This it says uh, Milano, Italy on it. So this is a, a memento from a trip that I had to Italy not too long ago. And if you didn't notice about me, I lived in Italy for three years. I lived in Milan. And I miss it every day. But I've had, um, I've been blessed and fortunate to have a lot of world experiences. <clears throat> so China, Mexico, Italy. Maybe I'll cook an Italian dish in one of these episodes. There's been another request already for a Puerto Rican thing that I make. I gotta think about that one. <laughs> we'll see. So the chicken is now actually, I mean, temperature-wise, it's cooked, but and we're gonna cook it a little bit more again so that it gets that nice brown uh, coating on it, as well as the caramelization from the onions. We want it to get a lot of good flavor, so cooking a little bit extra is helpful. appreciate you guys for tuning in and watching me do all this stuff in the kitchen. I mean, I like cooking. It's fun. It's a great way to ex share experiences and emotion with people that you love. When I have time, like I said before, I don't mind cooking big meals. But in the rush of Monday through Friday schedules and stuff like that, sometimes you just need something that's easy. And this one's a little bit more complicated, but... Fun nonetheless. So I'm thinking that's pretty good. And since um, I have pieces that look like this, they've got brown on them. Oops, my glasses are getting foggy. And then there's another piece like that. That looks pretty good to me. I'm gonna let it sit in the pan because the pan's gonna retain temperature, and so will the stove top itself. And Move that over to the side. This is still too hot, so we're gonna let that continue to cool off. And so I'll come back in a minute after this is cooled off and I can work with it with my bare hands. Thanks again, see you soon. Okay, and welcome back to the last and final step of our chilaquiles. So what I've done in the meantime, as everything cools down so I can work with it, is I've moved the chicken off of the 
skillet into this bowl and uh, let it come down to a manageable temperature. It's still pretty hot as you can see, maybe see the steam coming off of it, but um, it's probably to a point where I can work with it without severely burning my fingers. So what we're gonna do now is we've got this wonderful pan full of tortilla strips that we made and we're going to take the chicken and break it off into little pieces all around the pan. So this is gonna take several minutes because there's a lot of chicken in here and there's a lot of tortilla strips and some of the chicken is still pretty hot. So of course, as you can imagine, what you're wanting to do is distribute this chicken as best as you can um, all over evenly. Let me get some from the top because the middle's still hot. And you're gonna get your fingers dirty. You might have to keep snacking hands away from the bowl of cooling chicken because if people are, you know, I call it sharking when, when the cat comes around and he's hungry and he starts circling <laughs> the food bowl or he starts weaving in and out of um, people's feet and looking for attention and I call it sharking. So um, around here when food starts getting to a certain point, sometimes it's not just the cat that's sharking. It may be the humans as well. So usually when I got stuff on the counter like this, I kind of have to keep my eyes open or make sure that I have enough to go around. So um, again, you don't have to use chicken. You can put nopales or if you're again doing it for breakfast, you can put sausage and scrambled eggs on here. Um, I've never done it with fish, but that would be kind of interesting or not. I'm not sure, maybe. Maybe I might try that sometime. I bet steak, grilled steak would be good. Um, what other kind of vegetables would be good on here? For those of you who are maybe vegan and don't want to eat chicken, um, I bet just, you know, like uh, potatoes and um, what do you call those? Peppers, red pepper, green pepper, yellow peppers, the bell peppers, you know, cut in strips. Cook those separately, make your topping the way that you want it, and then put it on top of the tortilla strips. I bet that would be good. Um, I guess you could do tofu strips as well. Um, so you could do, you could get creative, and try a variety of different things. So as you can see, if you cut the chicken pretty small to begin with, then you have to spend less time here breaking it up into pieces. Um, but I've got the chicken pretty much evenly distributed around this pan. So I'm gonna move this out of the way and clean my fingers. And now comes the lasagna part. So it's not really lasagna, of course, we're making chilaquiles. But this is what I call the lasagna part. So you've got Basically the salsa verde, which means green sauce. So the can is green, dead giveaway, it's green sauce inside. Green sauce is made with tomatillos, which is a small green tomato looking thing like that. They break it down and cook it with a bunch of other stuff and they put it in this lovely can by a company called Evis, which I absolutely love and I only buy their green sauce because it's my favorite. And it comes in a can or in a jar, cans are fine. And then, for this recipe, you can use Mexican cheese, you can use either um, um, queso fresco, and you can grind it, um, crumble it on here. I'm kind of bringing a little bit of like the American flavor in it, and I'm gonna use a little bit of mozzarella, and I want it to go kind of down in, besides, between the tortillas, so it kind of gets down there and becomes a little bit kind of like a glue. So, because it's gonna go into the oven. And so just like, this is why I call it like a lasagna, because just like a lasagna, you want the cheese to go down in there and stick to the tortillas. Then you're gonna have to open your can. And again, I had a, I don't have it now. So sorry, you know, always wipe your cans before you open them, because you never know what's sitting on top of the can. So I will do that. And it's up to you. It depends on how much sauce you want to have on it. If you like salsa verde, it's one of my very favorite things in the whole wide world. 
I prefer it over red sauce, then you can use two cans. And so you want it to get in between the pieces of tortilla and chicken. Because as you can imagine, this is giving it all that great flavor. So put it over here on the top. It's gonna go down in there, into the sides, into the middle. And guess what? You don't have to do anything else. You don't even have to mix it in. Just let it do its thing. Shake it up a little bit. And if you want to, you can add a little bit more cheese on it. Um, if you're doing your vegetarian dish, maybe you use a vegetarian um, cheese. And this is just to fill in a couple of extra places. Don't worry about the middle too much because Here's the secret. You don't have to get it right here because when you go to serve this wonderful dish, you're going to use the tongs to pull it out or a fork, two forks or something like that. And what's going to happen is it's all going to kind of fall apart into the bowl or the plate where you serve it. So for now, we're just going to pop this in the oven real quick, just enough to get that cheese to melt down and get the salsa verde to go into the tortilla chips. So we'll be right back and show you what it looks like. Last step. I said the last step was the last step, but this step is actually the last step. All right, so it's been in the oven probably about 10 minutes. Not a lot, because all we really needed to do was melt the cheese. So let's go take a look. Yep, perfectly done. So there's your Mexican lasagna, chilaquiles. So um, all we did, as you can see, is just put, run it through at about 350 for about 10 minutes, just enough for it to get a little bit golden on top, melt that cheese and get the good flavor in, and we're done. What you would do after this would be simply put it on a plate. I would wait for it to cool off maybe just about two minutes, and then you can find a plate Maybe my lovely assistant will get me a plate so that we can, or maybe I'll get a plate. I'll be right back. One second. I'm in the part of the kitchen that you can't see. Okay, this is my special plate. So let me introduce you to my special plate. This is a plate that I picked up at a yard sale. Somebody didn't want it anymore, but I like it because I think it's like the perfect shape to eat on. You can put your food in there and it's because it's got edges so your food doesn't slide off like on a regular plate but it's not a full bowl either so we welcome to my meeting my special plate so again like i said if you're going to plate this and serve this you just go ahead and grab some tongs like this and dig in maybe get a pot holder so it doesn't slide and grab a chunk and there you go. So this is why I said you don't have to worry too much about how you set it up in the pan because once you put it on the plate, all the stuff is going to get mixed up anyway. So that's it. That's what I would do. That's about enough for me if I was eating this right now. And as you can see, we have plenty left over for other people. So they don't have to be sharking anymore. They can go ahead and enjoy their chilaquiles. And that is it. Of course, if you want to make it beautiful, because this is our pseudo kitchen show, cooking show, maybe take a little piece of those spring onions that was left over, or put it decoratively, I don't know, maybe right here on the plate, or maybe over here, make it look really pretty. One for each person in the household. Or if you like that Mexican cheese, you can crumble that. I'll show you. Over the top. And so I have a little bit of queso fresco. Usually keep it in the refrigerator. I didn't use it this time. Like I said, mozzarella works just fine for me. Um, it's easy to work with. And so you could just break a piece of cheese off and put it over the top, either here directly before you put it into the oven. Or if you're doing it on your individual plate, you could just do it after the fact for a little extra decor and a different flavor, of course. I'll just finish putting that here. And that, my friends, is chilaquiles a la Cristina. 
Thanks for tuning in this week, and um, thanks again to Mom for the inspiration to cook chilaquiles on the Quarant TV's Experimental Kitchen episode number two. We'll take requests for anything else that you'd like to see. Maybe we'll keep it along health and wellness theme. Maybe we won't, and we'll just do fun stuff. The whole point of the show is to have fun anyway and, um, and share. So I look forward to hearing from you, and see you next time. Stay tuned for an extra special small little segment to show you what we do with the oil and how I filter it. If you want to see that, that will be on a separate little video. Hasta luego.